Hello, bonjour everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Find Your Inner French Girl, How to Love You and Your Life. Can you guess what we're talking about today? Oui, la fête, celebrations. And those celebrations can be ones that you have on a grand scale, like the ones you celebrate Christmas, Easter, or any other cultural one that you celebrate, or it can be midweek or on the weekend celebrations, because that is one of the things that is very special about the French culture. They will have a dinner party midweek. And I want to teach you a few more things about how you can bring your inner French girl to your own fets because it's all about connection. And I think we all are really aware that that's most important now. So stay tuned, let's go. When the French girl fets, she's got her best stuff out there. As a hostess, all of the French girl's essential qualities come into play at her party. Her discretion informs all of her choices from the inception of the party itself whom to invite, what to serve, how to arrange the seating for excellent chemistry, to the food and conversation. But it's her show and she's the composer. She's taken all the time in the world to elaborate the nuances of her fete with only quality in mind. This is reflected in her attention to the tiniest details, from the flowers on the table, to the chill of the champagne, to the music playing in the background, and nobody is rushed particularly the French girl herself. The sensual ambiance at the table, the intimacy of guests clustered closely around a table brimming with fragrant warm food, and the liveliness that comes with raucous intelligent conversation makes the French girl's dinner party intensely gratifying. And her motto is celebrate life or it will pass you by. So there's a couple of things I wanna say about doing a fete or living and celebrating life like a French girl. Number one, she brings herself to the celebration. So what do I mean by that? Make this uniquely you. And here are a bunch of ideas that you can do this. One of them is being known for creating kind of themed dinner parties. So everything from the music to the flowers to the place setting to the food that you're offering is all gonna be, let's say, Thai or Italian or French, <laughs> bien sûr. Um, maybe even something different like Swedish or Indian, I don't know, make it interesting. And you are always known to create a theme because you love a theme. That's, that's my thing, I love themes. So people know when they come to me, they're gonna get that. Or people know when they come to my house that they will always be served a Kia Royale. This is my specialty. Now, I don't serve it in here, obviously. A Kia Royale is one of the most famous kind of aperitif drinks that the French have. And my husband and I love it. You just pour a little bit of creme de cassis on the bottom and you pour over, I prefer Prosecco, but I think the original is champagne. And it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous drink to have while you're enjoying a plate or a platter of different cheeses with grapes and olives and all. We just create this beautiful plate that all of us sit around and, uh, and drink and chat while my husband and I are sort of in the kitchen doing stuff and chatting. Like it's so easy and comfortable and flowing. So that's how I do me. I love a good theme, the music has to match and I'll always have a Kia Royale there or if not that, it'll be a themed drink that's from that kind of country. But how do you do you? You know, maybe you are known, and this I really wanna give you permission to do. I used to feel stressed that I had to make all of my homemade little appetizers and then homemade desserts and then the whole dinner. It used to stress me out because I like to just hang out with my guests instead of being in the kitchen the whole time. So what I heard someone say, and I can't remember his name, but he's a very famous, famous, um, kind of event planner. He said, I'm known 
as the one who knows the best place to get a French eclair in the city. I'm known to know which place to order the best uh, fruit platter from. I'm the one who's, you know, he, he knew the best place to get this delivery and that order and that, and he didn't cook at all. But he created, that was him, that was his style. He was great at interior design, so he created a special ambiance. And then all the food he would just serve on beautiful platters, okay? He didn't have to cook because he didn't really like and didn't know how. That was his way. So what about you could you offer to your guests? Because this is what the French really do. When you go to someone's dinner party in France, you feel like you've been offered a little insight into them, the way that they serve. I, I was at one house that was almost a little bit more bohemian and we all sat on the floor and we always ended with a chai tea. Another place that I went to was a very, very old kind of almost a, almost like an old uh, mansion. And no, it was not fancy and no, it wasn't even that clean or grand, but the kitchen had this grand thick wooden table in the middle and they had it like almost it looked like a, a French royalty had put this table together. It was an abundance of food. And you just were in this kind of dusty, old looking manner, but you didn't care because that's what they could offer. They were all about the food. So do you see what I mean? It's offering a piece of you. So what can you offer at your next fete? And make it flowing. I have to say this ladies, and this goes for many people all over the world, but I found this a lot in North America. Don't be concerned about the dishes. To leave your guests at the table and go do the dishes because you want to do the dishes rather than sit and enjoy the company of your, your guests, totally not French girl style. No one is rushed and the only thing that is important at a French gathering is connection. And folks, I think if there's anything that we've learned throughout this whole coronavirus epidemic is that it's the connection that we as humans need the most. We don't necessarily have to even be in the same room, but we've been calling people, haven't we? We've been having conversations, not just texting. We've been having Zoom calls. So here's a couple of ideas for you. One, Prepare, this, sorry, this is your elegant assignment. I have to be formal about this. Number one, start creating and planning your next fit. And really think, how can I share myself? Come up with a recipe, try the recipe, because often the first time you make it, it might not be that great. Try out a new dessert if you're a desserty person and make that your signature dessert that you're gonna serve. Um, so do all the planning from the music to the to the guest list, just the decorations, how are you gonna do it? Because this epidemic will be over and I'm telling you, everybody's gonna wanna celebrate. So have it all ready and prepared for when this whole thing ends. Or why wait, right? Pourquoi, as the French would say, have it now. You all can, you can send a little bit of a very simple menu for people to, to cook. So you're all gonna have this kind of an appetizer, this kind of a dinner, and this kind of a dessert. Make it very simple. And you all get together at the same time. You have a Zoom call, candles going, music playing in the background, and you have a virtual fete. I'm sure there's people. If anybody lives in France here, I think I might have one lady that lives in Paris. If you do this, or if you're going to do this, please let me know, because I wouldn't doubt it if some of the French people were doing this already. All right, that is your elegant assignment today. Prepare your fete. Give, your, give a piece of yourself in there, and I would love to hear about it. How are you going to do that? Put it in the comments below. I can't wait to read those. That's gonna be fun. Mwah. See you tomorrow.